Most bankers aren't ready to help you until after their third cup of coffee. But with Central National Bank's after-hours service, you don't have to wait for the bank lobby to open to get help. You can contact us from 6 to 8.30 in the morning or from 5 to 10 in the evening, and we'll connect you to a real, live, local person who can answer questions and fix problems seven days a week. Bank different. Bank central. Central National Bank. Member FDIC. And welcome to a Friday episode of That Ain't Right. That Ain't Right Friday. And uh, this Friday, we are going to go over a few more minor characters. I do have a little bit of a theme here, though, this time. Okay. Uh, we are going to go over the other Gribbles, not just Dale, uh, the other Dotreves, and the other Boomhowers. They all have uh, people related to them that show up in the show sooner okay. or later. So we're uh, we're gonna dive into the uh, the Boomhauer genealogy here. Well, are we gonna are you gonna are we gonna do Dotrieve and Boomhauer? Okay, so what what are we doing first today then? Uh, we're starting with the Gribbles. The, oh, we're starting with the Gribbles. Are yeah. we gonna do it? Are you gonna do it in chronological order from no oldest is, Gribble to youngest? This is this is in no uh, Gribble order. Okay, so they're no, they're all at a gribble. No particular gribble order. I went to a concert last night, and the guy said that he was high on dust, but I, not dust. He said like dirt or something. I don't. He was just being stupid, but it was it was the funniest. It was very funny. High on on not dust. angel dust because that's dust. what I thought it sounded like. Yeah, but that's I was not like what he said. high on. Yeah. I was like, oh, you go stand it over was, there, but don't sweat on me, <laughs> it please. Was something else. <laughs> All right, let's start with these other gribbles. We're going to start. Uh, so the gribble family tree. First and foremost, does it have branches? No, everybody hits them on the way down. <laughs> yeah, uh, we're going to start with Nancy Hicks Gribble. Uh, this is voiced by Ashley Gardner. Uh, she's Dale's wife, of course, Joseph's mother, and a weather girl turned anchor for local news station Channel eighty four. She's forty four years old in the uh, series. She had a fourteen year affair with John Redcorn which produced her son, Joseph. Yeah. Uh, although the affair ended when John Redcorn brief friends Dale. He does become Dale's friend later on. Yeah, he does. Nancy finally becomes a faithful wife to Dale. John Redcorn refused to come back to her out of respect for Dale. Uh, which is which is really funny that how uh, those particular episodes transpire, how after all those years... The truth never came out. So I, you know, the thing is, is when yeah. you're when you're making amends, like personally for things like that, you would think that for their conscience to be able to be clear, John and Nancy would have said something to Dale. Yeah. But see, they they don't they, they, they never choose do. to continue to live yeah. in guilt. Yeah. So do they ever show? And this is deeper than you know cartoons. But well, do they ever show true remorse? Uh, it, did they ever do a grand gesture to make up for what they did? No, so I don't think they do. Redcorn refused to come back, and her mother Bunny was also unfaithful to Nancy's father, but did not reveal her own long-term affair until oh. after Nancy mm -hmm. began suffering stress-induced hair loss over her unresolved feelings for Jod Redcorn. Mm. So yeah, they kept it in so long that her hair started falling out. That's. Nancy is a former beauty queen, and that is something that helped her get her job as a weather girl. A weather girl, yeah. She yeah. is a weather girl. I love Nancy. I think that she is fantastic on this show because Nancy is one of those characters that you get very small doses of, and it's plenty. You know, little Nancy Shug. goes a long way. Yeah, I like Nancy's character, though. I think she's funny. Joseph John Gribble. 
uh, voiced by Brittany Murphy, uh, 97 Brittany to Murphy. 2000. Brecklin Rest Meyer, 2000 to 2009. Uh, he's Dale and Nancy's 13-year-old son at the time of the show. And so he I'm, was voiced by Brittany Murphy? He was voiced by Brittany Murphy to begin with, and then Brecklin Meyer. Okay. Yeah. Or Brecken Meyer, sorry. Um, uh, despite Joseph's, uh, he's, he's one of Bobby's best friends. Uh, no, I don't know who Joseph is. Well, I'm just yeah, saying it. it I'm just oh, you're just, yeah, yeah, what yeah, I got yeah. Here, my bad, yeah. my bad. <laughs> despite, despite Joseph's obvious Native American features, his similarity in appearance to John Redcorn and the fact that his middle name is John, yep. neither he nor Dale is aware that Redcorn is his no. biological father. And they never are made aware. Nancy refers to Dale having a quote-unquote, Jamaican grandmother, to explain Joseph's dark complexion. <laughs> uh, Redcorn's occasional and awkward attempts to get closer to Joseph, uh, against Nancy's wishes usually, uh, lead Joseph to regard him as a strange and creepy man. Uh, Joseph starts out as an ordinary teen, but eventually grows weird and creepy, not to mention dim-witted. That is very true. Like, when the when the show first starts, he's just like, <laughs> you know, he's just Joseph, yeah, yeah. right? But he does. He gets super creepy, like especially around girls and stuff. As the show goes on, he becomes a, a really creepy kid. Yeah, he does. Uh, he, he he when he is going through puberty, he is really he has a really odd experience yeah, with puberty. Is. Really odd experience with puberty. So he started off as an ordinary teen, then he gets weird and creepy uh, and, and dim witted. He he is a dumb kid. Uh, Joseph begins to take after Dale more than John, uh, Nancy, or even any of his friends. Joseph has a half-sister named Kate, yes. uh, John Redcorn, yeah. having another affair with a lady. Uh, she's and very, don't, they, uh, don't they date? Yes, they try to date. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, she is very similar to Joseph in personality and interest, but likewise does not realize that Redcorn is her father. Joseph is the only character of the series shown to physically mature. He grows six inches in height over the course of a summer. Uh, he has a more built physique, athletic prowess, and he has a deeper voice uh, and a wispy mustache upon his reappearance. So that's how they explain going from one voice actor to the next. Oh, he grows up, up a little bit. But it's yeah. crazy that he's the only one that has the, he's the only continuity one of aging. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, he's the only one. All right, uh, last in the Gribble family tree is Bug Gribble. Bug Gribble, the gay rodeoer. He is uh, voiced by David Herman. Yeah, uh, He's Dale's father, Nancy's father-in-law, and Joseph's okay, this grandfather. Is deep. I've got a deep thing for you. Okay, so the episode where we find out that Dale's dad is gay, uh -huh. we also uh, uh, see the struggle that Dale has mm -hmm. accepting the fact that his dad is homosexual. Sure. Well, I always, and this is the two and two that I put together, uh, you know, this go around in, in adulthood watching King of the Hill. Right. He was a exterminator who killed bugs, who uh -huh. then had a conflict with his dad, who was homosexual. <laughs> whose name is Bug. Whose name is Bug. Yeah. So maybe, I'm, I uh, don't shoot the messenger. I'm just saying maybe there's some <laughs> correlation hey to the angst that he feels about his dad's sexuality and that maybe that has something to do with the exterminator job and the, the I, maybe it's a metaphor for he wants to, you know, yeah. you know, not kill his dad, but I'm not going to shoot that the inside messenger, of his dad. but uh, I am going to tell you, I think that's all bullshit. <laughs> yeah, it is probably. <laughs> so, uh, uh, he has been estranged from Dale for many, many years. Like you were talking about, he, yeah. uh, he kissed Nancy at her and Dale's wedding reception. That's what caused the estrangement. Uh, Bug is actually gay and had been flirting with a Filipino caterer instead. Yeah. And upon sensing Dale's imminent entry into the room, attempted to hide his orientation from his son by grabbing and kissing the nearest thing in a dress. Uh, this misunderstanding, which was kissing uh, Nancy uh, and Bug's inability to reveal his true sexuality to Dale, resulted in their estrangement. When Dale and Nancy renew their wedding vows 20 years afterwards, Nancy arranges to invite Bug. And Dale initially suspects, suspects his odd behavior and his having a quote-unquote partner of meaning that Bug is an undercover government agent, but finally accepts the truth upon seeing Bug wow. and his partner share a devoted kiss. Bug's, yep. a, Bug's appearance in My Own Private Rodeo retcons his appearance in earlier episodes where he bears a near identicality to present-day Dale. 
So they change his appearance. Change how he looks. Mm, that's kind of weird. Yeah, it is weird. So Just Joseph grows up. Continuities. Gr- Joseph grows up and Bug changes his appearance. Oh, yeah. I forgot to mention this in the last episode. Yeah. So uh, the way animation works, which you know a lot of people might not know, is a lot of it they send... To elves. They send, well, to sure. elves or yeah. overseas. Sure. <laughs> overseas to uh, South Korean elves or... Yeah. Japanese elves, sure. animator elves. Right, animator elves. Uh, but so they send it off to Korea for this show, particularly for King right. of the Hill. Right. And that's where all of the, uh, the actual, an- putting the animation together and everything, sure. the, the finished yeah. product yeah. was uh, Korea. Yeah. So I really thought it was interesting in that last episode that we just discussed that they had uh, that little scene, the uh, the Southeast Asian. Uh, oh, yeah. The, the, yeah. The, the, the parable. The, the parable yeah. about life. And uh-huh. the animation for that. I just uh-huh. thought that was cool. And also, I don't know if you know that uh, there's a Simpson episode. I think it's the next Simpsons episode. You might have heard of this, Mason. They're doing it in Death Note style. The animation yeah, style of the, the Japanese yeah. anime Death Note style. Well, it's a treehouse of horror. Yeah. It's because uh, um, they got the um, uh, studio who originally did Death Note to uh, do a little bit of work on it. That is wow. crazy good. That's all. I mean, and that's again, you know, uh, there was a Disney executive uh, since we're on the conversation animation. Yeah. That uh, th- I think it's the Disney CEO right now. I think he might be the top guy at Disney. Uh, he he just recently said that uh, adults, after they have been watching animation all day with their children, don't care to watch animation. Anything, anything, King, you know, whether it be King of the Hill, whatever, they don't sure. want to watch anything animated. I get that after they put the kids to bed. I can see that, and yeah. and your generation uh-huh. might be able to see that, but mine and Mason's generation, I don't see that because uh-huh. we uh, uh, we are the generation that reclaimed uh, animation for adults. Okay, because animation in its origins was not for children. If you go back and you talk to Tex Avery, Tex Avery himself has said, look at my cartoons, a wolf howling at a woman that's half naked. Yeah, sure. He said, how is that for children? Yeah. And cartoons in their origin point, if you go back even further, just the black and white cartoons, yeah. there is some raunchy sure stuff there out yeah. there. The original stuff is really raunchy because it was made for adults. So that CEO saying that, I think he, uh, in, the animation world right now is taking a big hit because it's being misunderstood by your generation because you're, sorry. it's all the CEOs. Well, it's not your fault. <laughs> you're, you're progressive. You're here. Yeah. You're, you're doing yeah. a show about King of the Hill, yeah. an adult animated program. We so, went and watched like puppets together. You we know did what I mean? go so and watch puppets. Yeah. It's a, the, the, uh, same episode that you're talking about with the death note stuff in it. Yeah. It also has uh, part of that episode, uh, the Simpsons and, uh, Bob's burgers crossover. That's good. Yeah. I like crossovers cool. like that. I like yeah. the, the, there was one that they did with, uh, Bob's burgers, uh, King of the Hill too. Show. Well, King of the Hills had its own cameo in just about every one of those shows. Yeah. They even had one in uh, Family Guy. Uh, Peter is standing in, it's, I think it's a Halloween episode too. Peter's like standing in front of the mirror and he grabs his face and he pulls his face and it's Hank standing in the mirror. Mm. And I think he says, I tell you what or something. I don't know. Yeah. Or, like, blah, or something like that. He just laughs. And then there's another one where um, they make it to where. Family Guy is uh, a fever dream of Hanks, and then he wakes up. He's like, "Oh, I can never wake up and understand it. I always wake up before I understand if, if I know they understand the baby." <laughs> <laughs> is that on a King of the Hill episode? No, it's on a Family Guy. It's on, on a Family Guy, guy episode yeah. where it, we'll have to talk about that. We'll have to dig that up and have yeah. that as a Friday episode. That's cool. That'd be cool. That's cool. See, that's the thing is that I've enjoyed about this, Mike, is yeah. the further and further and further. Oh, yeah. Like I go it's down deep. the rabbit hole. Yeah, there's so much more content, and uh, like we had discussed before, it just seems like it's it's generationally at a point like uh, like how big the '70s show was when it came out in the late yeah. '90s. Right. It's it's like that again. It's like a resurgence of the '90s. The '90s is exploding, you know, because sure. all of us are now able to buy the things that we sure. could afford when we Absolutely. were kids. Absolutely. But uh, I well, love it. Hey, we're going to drive into the Dotreves and Boom the Dotreves when we come back from this commercial. Ooh. 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 Ooh.
heart up. Okay, we are right. back. And now, uh, this is officially the second half of this episode. The second half. Uh, we're going to dive into other doe trees. So, the first one being Gilbert Fontaine doe tree. Gilbert Fontaine doe tree. Uh, this uh, man is voiced by David Herman, again. Great uh, voice actor. He's a lot of King of the he Hill. He does a ton of stuff on here, yeah. He's Bill's a lot cousin. Of King of the Hill. Though at one point shown uh, to live on the family estate with his aunt and cousin in Louisiana Bayou in a beer can named Desire. That's he, a good... Uh, that's an excellent episode. It's a good episode. It's the uh, one where Bobby goes... I'm wilting. <laughs> yeah, Bobby just goes nuts with the whole uh, Southern Bell stuff. He and Bill eventually wind up as the last two living doe trees. Uh, it is strongly implied that he is gay, and he even hits on Buck Strickland when Buck attempts to capitalize on the Doe Tree family's traditional barbecue sauce re- recipe in blood and sauce. Oh. I love that episode where they introduce him. I think it's fantastic. Oh, I agree, yeah. I'm Wilton. I'm Wilton. All right, next, uh, SMA Doe Tree. Yep. This was voiced by Meryl Streep. Oh, Meryl Streep. Yeah. Actually, there was a cameo in the last episode that I forgot, too. Heather Locklear voices a character that she's shown, but she doesn't have any speaking parts. Oh. So I'll leave that up. (laughs) Okay. How is that a thing? Well, well, the the character Uh doesn't have any voice in Uh this particular one, but the character reappears in a different episode. As Heather Locklear's voice, so Heather uh-huh. Locklear okay. voices that. Right. It's just like a. It's just it's just the same thing with the uh, this, this, this the the episode the the original ending episode. Sure. Where everybody's there, they didn't have every voice actor in the room because if yeah. they did, they would have had to have like six studios for that because that was like they had all of the iconic voices from the show pretty much. So this is SMA Dotrieve again, voiced by Meryl Streep. She is Bill and Gilbert's aunt, Gilbert. uh, matriarch of the Dotrieve clan. She expressed deep concern over the family's ever shrinking headcount, lamenting that the Dotrieve blood is down to a trickle. She happily received Bill upon his return for a visit and was not displeased to see him and his cousins when widows taking mutual interest. She is only seen in a beer can na- oh, Jesus. She is only seen in a beer can named Desire. It is later revealed that she had died after a fever. She got a fever and died. Oh wow. Yeah. Next, uh Violetta Dotree. Uh, voiced by Natalie Maines. Uh, she is Bill and Gilbert's cousin. She lived on the family estate in Louisiana with SMA, yeah, Gilbert, SMA and, Gil- and yeah. Rose and Lily, the widows of the uh, two other Dotrieve cousins. Upon Bill's visit, she, Rose, and Lily, all having been without male companionship for too long, vied for Bill's affections and attempted to seduce him, even despite Violetta's own blood relationship to him. Like SMA, she is only seen in a beer camp named Desire. It is later revealed that she had died in her sleep. <laughs> wow. You're killing off all the doe trees. The doe trees are dying one by one. I think this house might have a little more. It might Maybe have. Boo Bays <laughs> needs to explore this doe tree house. The doe tree blood is down to a trickle. Uh, next is Lenore Doe Tree, voiced by uh, famous actress Ellen Barkin. Uh, she is Bill's mean-spirited ex-wife. She is mentioned frequently throughout the course of the series, but only appears twice, once being when Bill and Bobby watch Bill's wedding video. Uh, she then appears when Bill begins dating former Texas Governor Ann Richards to uh, meddle with their relationship. <laughs> yeah, that was, that's a great episode, too. <laughs> and the episode is Hank and the Great Glass Elevator. But with help from Richards, Bill is finally able to tell her off and move past her toxic influence. I have an argument with her only appearing twice. Because Bill appeared as Lenore one time. He did. Yeah, yeah, Bill did. Yeah, you're right. So ultimately, it's really three times, but uh, it was really only her twice. Last of the Dotrieve tree is Eric Dotrieve, voiced by Stephen Root, uh, who also does Bill. He is Bill Stephen Root. He is Bill's implicitly deceased father, who was emotionally unstable. Among the abuses Bill recalls from his father are having been spanked every day between the ages of 9 and 16, being called a girl, and made to wear pretty, pretty dresses, and being locked in a rabbit hutch. (laughs) That's that's, that's terrible. That's rough. Yeah, it's rough. Uh, It's a rough existence. Child uh, abuse is not funny, but uh, pretty, pretty dresses and being locked in a rabbit hutch is. Uh, And that's it for the Doe Trees, right? That's it for the Doe Trees. 
So last, but certainly not least, are the other boom howers. We have uh, three boom howers that are mentioned during uh, three boom howers. this uh, series. First being Patch. Do you remember who played Patch Boomhauer? Patch Boomhauer wasn't Patch voiced by uh, got any weed? Be a lot cooler if you did. Who was it, Mason? Uh, you, you really don't know it, Rusty? No, I know who it is. Matt Maha- Matt Matthew Matthew nope. McConaughey. No, it was Brad Pitt. Brad oh, Pitt? it was Brad Pitt. Yeah, I thought Brad, Brad Pitt. Pitt did. Uh, oh, who did? It was, oh, uh, Matthew McConaughey did. Uh, what was his name? Rad Tibbedy. Rad Tibbedy. Tibbedy Ox. <laughs> So yeah. this is Patch Boomhauer, voiced by <clears throat> Brad Pitt. Uh, he is Boomhauer's sleazy, womanizing younger brother. He appears in Patch Boomhauer, apparently engaged to marry Boomhauer's old flame, Catherine, much to Boomhauer's mounting displeasure, as he himself has unresolved feelings for Catherine, and Patch's continued philandering angers him for her sake. The wedding is later called off after Patch hires strippers for his bachelor party and frames Boomhauer for trying to break up the engagement. Patch makes a final cameo in Lucky's wedding suit as one of the guests at Lucky and Lou, uh, or Lou Ann and Lucky's wedding. Patch, like Boomhauer, speaks in a fast-paced Southern gibberish. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. Talk about that. I got a dang old, dang old, got dang. Okay, so we'll go ahead and talk about it anyway. So, pretty amazing uh, though that Brad Pitt. You yeah, know. I watched uh, again. I did the commentary on yeah. it, and they did the making. They had a making of deleted scene. Sure, and I'm gonna get that to making you. Making of deleted scenes. Well, they had deleted scenes, and they had the making of. Oh, uh, gotcha. on the this, this, I was trying to think of the word of the special features on the DVD. If you it's set been a long out time. to make deleted scenes, well, it's, uh, it you seems know, a you know pointless. that is uh, yeah. that is an idea for a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> deleted scenes deleted where all you scenes. do is discuss sure. deleted scenes from old sure. movies, TV that. shows. Yeah. That's a good one. Coming soon yeah. to Rogue Media Network. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Deleted scenes with Mike and Rusty. Uh, woof, woof. I, don't know. I lost where I was going. Yeah, no, I lost. So you watched the deleted right. scenes. Oh yeah, I was watching yep. the deleted scenes. They had the the making of little clip on Your there. Your thought was deleted, and uh, yeah, it was. It just went. Goo, goo, goo. <laughs> it was the well, the the logging out sound on Windows. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ding dong dong. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, so you have mail. He talks about the origin of Boomhauer's voice on there. Yeah. And I think that's the best, uh, because he tells the story a thousand times and there's a thousand places you could hear the story, but Dang I think the, park his butthole, man. the best version of it is there. And that's what he does. He goes, he, he goes on about, there was a, a phone call on MTV and he said, it's really funny because somebody had to actually call up and say, Hey, yeah. can I get the MTV phone number? Yeah. And, and, you know, back sure. in the days when you had to call yeah. the directory to get it. So the guy calls in, no, 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 and he said, uh, butthole, man. Uh, Mike Judd said, I don't know why he thought the show was called Porky's, Porky's Butthole, butthole. Yeah. but that's what he thought the show was, mm-hmm. and he was bitching about the show, talking about the dang old Porky's Butthole. <laughs> man, I wish we could reach that guy. I want to talk to that guy. Porky's Butthole? I want to talk to Porky's Butthole. Yeah, guy. That, that, that guy probably doesn't exist. He's if probably that, dead by if now. If that guy was still alive and we were able to reach him, I would change the name of this show to Porky's Butthole. Because by the way they get, the way he talks about that guy, that guy was probably like in his 60s at that time sure. in the 90s, early 90s too, because yeah. that was before the show uh, his inception. Well, you know, I'll talk to a 100-year-old. Well, I'm going to get you. I still need to get it. I'm going to... Uh, Rip it from the DVD to the computer, and I'm going to get you the file for uh, the making of, and yeah. I'm going to get you the commentary yeah. episodes and stuff like that. Let's do it. I really wish there was more commentary episodes from season one. I don't know mm. why there's not. Right? Mm. And, and there's only, uh, from what I understand, it's only the season one, two, and three that have any I commentary. I doubt very seriously at that time commentary was really a thing. Probably. Well, you know? yeah, I think the DVDs didn't come out until like 2003, though. Yeah. So the show had been out for a little while before they released anything, and then they didn't even release all of them. Another company had to pick it up and get the rights to finish off the DVD set. Really? That's why wow. That's why only the first three seasons of the DVD set, I think, have content like that, because mm. all the other stuff is just the show. They just cranked it out. Because they only mm. did so much with King of the Hill, and then uh, King of the Hill was getting canceled and stuff like that. So, I mean, why are you going to continue on with the DVD set of a show that you're canceling? They yeah. didn't put the energy or effort sure. to finish it off, which it sucks. I really hope, pray for the near future, maybe that they'll go back and they'll revisit yeah. cranking out that. With this I doubt like it'll that. ever happen because, you know, they're, they're making so much new content. Right. You know, hopefully that uh, Bad Crimes gets redone. That would uh, be great. Hopefully it gets picked up somewhere. It looked, really, it looked like it was going to be a really neat show. I just want to see more Mike Judge stuff. Uh, so yeah, the next one on this family long. tree, Dr. and Mrs. Boomhauer, voiced by Mike Judge. They are uh, Boomhauer's parents. 
Mrs. Boomhauer is shown to speak like Boomhauer in Peggy's Turtle Song. In Three Coaches and a Bobby, Boomhauer mentions that his parents had won the lottery and moved to Florida. There's a okay. lot going on in Boomhauer's they're really past. T- they're really tanned people, though, yeah, so I could see Florida. Tan. Sure. Well, I can just see the way that Boomhauer speaks and the stuff that he does Florida being man. very Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Last but certainly not least is Meemaw Boomhauer, uh, again, voiced by Mike Judge. Uh, she is Boomhauer's elderly grandmother. She is seen in Dang Old Love when Boomhauer, infatuated with Marlene, goes to Meemaw to ask for the family heirloom wedding ring as well as Lucky's wedding suit, where she is seen sitting with the other guests as well as dancing with Patch for a brief moment. Meemaw speaks in the same characteristic gibberish that the rest of the Boomhauer share and wears dentures. Who was in the car uh, for Mother's Day? That was his mom. That was his mom. Yeah. Okay, so that's Mrs. Boomhauer because she yeah, was Ms. like, dang old man, dang old Mother's Day. Dang old, dang old. Porky's butthole. Porky's butthole. And that's it, man. That's all the Doe Treves. That's, that's the Doe Treves. all of the Boomhauers. That's the Boomhauers. And that's all of the Gribbles. And that's all the Gribbles. There you go. That was the gribble, genealogy gribble. of uh, what we know. It might go deeper than that in dialogue. but Thanksgiving's coming up. Gribble, gribble. Yeah, Gribble Gribble. Thanksgiving is coming up. And Halloween is coming <laughs> up too. Stupid. Uh next year we'll have some spooky stuff for y'all. Spooky. We're just starting out, so give it cut us a break on holidays and Yeah, absolutely. Uh this was a great well, Friday though. I well, really enjoyed the conversation. Well, it was good. It was. Well, the, you know, I did want to do like a spooky deal, but if we did, we would have to revisit an episode that we've like recently visited within the last two yeah. months. Yeah. I didn't want to do anything that recent, nah. but ne- next year, what I'll do is, is there was a, uh, there was actually a bracket that they had online that I was bracket watching. Meyer? Uh, yeah. Bracket Meyer. Uh, they had a, uh, a bracket of all of the shows that could be considered spooky yeah, you were telling me about that, yeah. or eerie or whatever. Well, and then they were doing a, and then uh, there was also a thing where a King somebody just thing. went and like rated all the shows. I remember you sent me that as well. Yeah, yeah, they did a lot of different stuff with the shows. So there is a group of spooky episodes, yep. and we will reach. We, you know, next October we will. We well, got the Christian haunted house. Month. You got the pig, and then who knows? Maybe by next year, yeah, there'll be three episodes a week, and we'll be actually maybe able to do something big with this. So guys, if uh, you want to make that possible, uh, stay tuned. Because, if you want to make uh, three episodes possible a week, uh, mm-hmm. you can attend my wake. Uh, once that starts and Mason can take over. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. What, what, what we're going to do is is we're going to set up some Patreon and some stuff like that. Sure. I don't know where we're going to get the content from for those things, but we're going to try to get you guys some Porky's bonus. Porky's Butthole. That's yeah, we'll we're going to call Porky's Butthole. So we're going to try to get y'all some <laughs> bonus content in the form of uh, a newsletter or newsletter. or something. And I think what the newsletter might Arlen consist Times. of is uh, like, yeah, you could call it the Arlen Times. It would be just a uh, like a rundown of the episode that we already did, like a transcript of sure. what we discussed or something, something, you know. And if you guys have any ideas of what you would like to see Absolutely. for extra content, uh, yeah. you know, feel free to shoot out in any you know any form of uh, contact, whether it be our phone number, uh, which is seven, which is seven. Uh, mm-hmm. Email address. email address rogue media yep. uh, yep. you can go to info at rogue media info network.com or, or rusty y at rogue rusty media network. Y, mike at rogue media mike, network.com. Mike. yeah any of those you can write to us if you want to write to us we will certainly put your letters on the air yeah i'll put your letters on the air uh we'll read them out also if you need to dm me you could dm me on instagram twitter all that i check all that stuff regularly b-w-a-a-a-k-o-t-h we would like to hear your ideas uh this was brought to you by the letter G. For Gribble? For Gribble. Sure. Brought to you by the letter G. Provided by viewers like you. (laughs) I love that about PBS. Yeah. You know, that was one of the things. It was very comforting. Well, no, as a kid, I was just like, it. I I don't know if, I think it's a marketing tactic. Yeah. But it made me feel like I was really a part of something big. I was like, you know, as a kid, I'm just like, damn. Brought to you by the Stephen G. Goldman Foundation. It was like. viewers like like you. you. Yeah, it's like. PBS really thought to thank me, like for watching their programs. Like they thank me every. <laughs> it's like after every show, you thank were, you for watching. You thought PBS they were thanking for you specifically? Like you. Yeah, because they said sure. viewers like you. So I'm did like, you ever, me, right? Did yeah. you ever watch the telethons, like the the PBS telethon things? Ah, uh, hell no. They would give away the tote bags and all that stuff. Uh, uh, anything if you gave telethon, fifty bucks, you got a tote bag. Yeah, anything telethon related, I really? just, I generally skipped. See, I like telethons. I, I generally skip those. And you know what I like about telethons, like especially like the Jerry Lewis telethon i like the 3 a.m slot 
Because oh, here we go. people are sweaty and nasty and gross by then. We got sent two uh, two ads from, from our guy here. We're going to listen to one and we'll save one for... Yeah. Uh, I'll send them to you and we'll Let's save one it. for the show. This is George Takei. I played Sulu on Star Trek. I love the show King of the Hill and I'm so glad to be listening to the podcast Wah. King of the Hill Rerun Watchers podcast. Rerun Watchers. Thank you, Mike and Rusty. Actually, I want to listen to the second one now. After that, I can't yeah, help it. I was going to save it. it but. Let's listen to the second one. Appearing Friday night at the Arlen Mall, sponsored by Strickland Propane, the Propaniacs, <laughs> at 8 p.m. Come by and see the antics of the Propaniacs and their comedy show. Listen to that in the background. That's at Arlen Mall, Friday night, 8 p.m. <laughs> You know, it really does sound like an old radio cutout. It does. It's great. Because the radio never would pick up the background song entirely when they were doing those readouts like that. That was Who great. sent us those? That's Christopher. His name is Christopher. Christopher! I'm going to go ahead and send those to you, Mike. You so did a fine job them. there, Christopher. Yeah, we appreciate that again, Chris. Chris, uh, I think you great. have some voice actors in your house. Yeah, you do, buddy. You got, yeah. uh, I, don't know if it's, I don't know if it's a group of people Small that's doing this or not. Studio. But, uh, You're speaking of elves. Press. That sounded like elves. Propane Propane. Propane elves. I'm a propane Just right. a propane elf. All right. I think we're done. Yeah, that's uh, it. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thanks, guys. We will see you uh, again on Monday. We my time, yay. We my time, yay. This has been a Rogue Media Podcast.